Good morning. It's a while since we've done this, but also it's a while since I have left my little country town. It is Thursday and I woke up in the best mood today. Well, I didn't wake up in the best mood, but over breakfast I realized that Spotify had done released their wrapped thing. Today is the 1st of December. And honestly, my playlist is such a vibe, which I, that's the point, right? It's self-curated. So I've been listening to that all morning and I'm in such a good mood and I thought, you know what? I'm going to skive off uni and go to town and get some Christmas biscuits from the Nord Bakery because they are my favourite and of course limited edition. It's only three and a bit weeks till Christmas. And um, see my sister and give her the present that I bought her and generally take advantage of today being the first day of summer. The sun is actually out and I freaking love summer. I love being warm. So it's just put me in the best mood. Now, I haven't filmed on this camera in my car before, so if it sounds bad, um, that's the vibe. I have to go a different way into Aubrey than usual because the road I normally take is literally full, like, um, what do I want to say? Has literally collapsed. Uh, there was a sinkhole in it from the, um, the heavy rain and the sinkhole turned into a six metre by six metre hole in the road. I'm skyping off uni. I, I made a vlog all about how I started a Master of Arts in English and then I never put it together. I was bored by the whole thing. I don't really know what to say about it. I can tell you I started this degree because I want to more clearly think about and articulate the reasons I don't like books. If you watch my videos about books, you'll know that I'm ambivalent a lot of the time and they're readable, but I want to be able to more cogently discuss why I think they fell through for me. And at the same time, by understanding how books work, in a technical way rather than just me enjoying them way, maybe I can get a better appreciation of books and like them better. And also broaden my reading spectrum because right now I really just read fantasy. Look, that's a pot hole. Um, this road is full of holes, but not as big <laughs> as the one the other way, so <laughs> yep. Um, so that's basically why I'm doing this degree and obviously you do not need to go to university to learn these skills but um, this is an environment where I prefer to learn and it's where I'm comfortable learning and get the practice of literary criticism and also just external deadlines are a great motivator aren't they? If you're somebody who needs to work to a deadline, then formal study is a great way to do that. <laughs> Can you see that guy right behind me? What a toss bag. You can't overtake on this road except for really this spot. So, see ya, toss bag. <laughs> it's a human banker. I was too busy talking to you and I didn't look at my petrol and so now I've had to stop at a petrol station I've never been to before and I hate it, thanks. Um, I am 40 and this shit still makes me really anxious and so I had a plan in my head I'm going to stop at this petrol station that I drive past on my way into town and I got there and it was closed and I'm like oh no now I have to go to the sketchy looking one and <laughs> um, so <laughs> please let me know if you can relate also it's really relatively not that long ago that I was too scared to get fuel in the car at all. So this is fine. I can do this. It's, it's actually zero problems. I've just built it up in my head. I said, I don't know where to go to pay. Oh. Uh. I mean, obviously it was fine and I was clearly overreacting. <laughs> okay. Let's continue. Also, I tell you what, it is so wild, absolutely wild, to say, shit, I need petrol, and just have the money in the bank to go get petrol. I don't think I will ever get over that feeling. Although, to be fair, 
with the price of petrol the way it is, that might not be a thing for long. As I was driving, my new drink bottle genuinely fell apart. Like there's supposed to be a, a seal around that and it just fell inside there. So that's disappointing. I have been to the bakery. I'm just waiting for my sister to finish her meeting. I told her like, just say so long losers and walk out. But she, you know, she's a professional, I suppose. So she's staying in her meeting. I'll show you what I came to town for. So I've got, these are for news. They are soft bikis. If can I squish one to show you? Soft like that, icing covered biscuits um, with pepper and spices. But when you Google Pfeffer News, you get these and you get these. And the bakery calls these, uh, oh, was it pepper, pepper broughton or something? Or something like that. They're the same. They're just different country names, um, according to Google. Now, if you are from a Scandi country, I'm sure you'll tell me the difference. But either way, they're bloody delicious. These are soft and will go stale real quick. These I'll be eating through to probably Australia Day. And, 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 um, I've already started it, <laughs> but it's a raspberry Danish, <gasps> which is flaky AF. It's flaking all over me. So I'm going to sit here and eat my Danish while I wait for my sister. Can you hear the planes outside? It's, um, it just got louder. Uh, we've had non-stop planes running up and down the river for a couple of years now because they were patrolling the river during COVID lockdown. We're on the border. The river is literally the border. And so they were patrolling the river looking for people <laughs> trying to cross the river, which did happen a lot. Uh, and now the planes are patrolling the river because it's flooding. So there's always the sound of a plane overhead. It's actually so hot and I love it. Um, the weather station says, 30. It says it's 30 outside, which is awesome. Um, I am, while I'm taking the day off from what I should be doing, I'm going to wrap Christmas presents. I bought some Christmas paper when I was in town just now, and I'm going to wrap my books that my family have bought for me for Christmas. Um, they will find out what they bought for me on Christmas Day. I'm going to tell you about it because it's not like it's a secret. So, in order to wrap, we need coffee, obviously. We need Oh, excuse you. We need a uh, Christmas vibes candle. This is by Radio Symphonic. It's new. It smells like ginger and pepper and Christmas vibes. Um, by Radio candles are freaking expensive and I love them. So I've got one in my office downstairs called Bibliotech and it makes the place smell like a library. It's got those like musty vanilla vibes. But that over next to you. We are going to wrap really quick because the light that's making me look so beautiful is uh, going to come straight in this full um, ceiling to floor window in about half an hour and then this room will be unlivable. I love that we have these giant windows facing the street because I can see everything that goes on. And in fact, I want to get cameras at the front, not because there's a burglary problem in the neighborhood, although there definitely is, uh, but because I want to see what's happening out there when the blinds are closed. We love her. Femina, a new history of the Middle Ages through women, women written out of it, Janina Ramirez. Tina Ramirez has written a book that's on my shelf I've been meaning to read for years called The Private Lives of the Saints and I think she was a historian on Time Team. I feel like that's where I know her from or maybe I just know her from Twitter. Anyway, this book is new in 2022. It's just come out in paperback, I think like the end of November or today technically. And I will read you the blurb. Uh, it's got a quote from Hildegard of Bingen that says, I am the fiery life of divine substance. I blaze above the beauty of the fields. I shine in the waters. I burn in the sun, moon and stars. And here's the blurb. 
The Middle Ages is seen as a bloodthirsty time of Vikings, Saints and Kings, a patriarchal society which oppressed and excluded women. But what if this was only half the story? Oxford historian Janina Ramirez has uncovered countless influential women's names struck out of historical records with the word femina annotated beside them. In this groundbreaking reappraisal of the Middle Ages, Ramirez reveals why women have been written out of history and why it matters, shedding new light on remarkable medieval women such as Jadwiga, Jadwiga, the only female king of Poland, the Viking warrior from Birka who caused uproar when she was discovered to be female, and Hildegard of Bingen, the visionary polymath whose work was nearly lost to the Nazis. Femina illustrates the Dark Ages, <laughs> like never before. It actually has dark there in little quotation marks. We don't use the term dark ages, obviously. This one I also discovered from Twitter and I just insta bought it. This is Wild Tales from Early Medieval Britain by Amy Jeffs. Must have a blurb on the inside. <gasps> Look at these end papers. Yes. So maybe I should explain myself when I say that I've bought these books that my family are giving to me for Christmas. This is usual. This is how we operate because I am so fussy to buy for. My mum will attest in the comments, she will leave me a comment this time, to say that yes, I'm notoriously difficult to buy for. And so when I buy the books for me and I say to everyone, thank you, you got me exactly what I wanted. Like that's living the dream. There's, um, I love this situation that we've got going. Okay, the blurb for Wild. Sheer cliffs, salt spray, explosive sea spume, thunderous clouds, icy waves, whales with mountains on their backs, sleet, bitter winds, marshes, forests, the unceasing cries of birds and the death grip of subterranean vaults that have never seen the sun. These are the wild landscapes of a world almost familiar. In Wild, Amy Jeff's journeys, on foot and through early medieval texts, manuscripts and objects, from landscapes of desolation to hope, offering the reader an insight into a world at once distant and profoundly close to home. Jeff skillfully weaves reflections on travels through the landscape with short stories, offering rich and soulful depictions of an idea of the wild. Inspired by the old English, yeah, inspired by the old English poems of the Exeter book, the Welsh Englinia, um, that's Welsh, I can't pronounce that and their Imarama of the Irish tradition, as well as surviving early medieval artifacts of gold, garnet, stone, and whale's bone, these stories give voice to figures who tread the borderlands of early medieval literature, women, monsters, animals. <gasps> and there's illustrations, let's find one. I really shouldn't look in it because it is my present, but, oh, they're woodcuts. See if you can tell me what that is. I'm so excited. Are you sensing a theme when I show you this one as well? Going to church in medieval England, Nicholas Orm. <laughs> I've wanted this for so long and it's just come out in paperback. So I grabbed it because academic works are so expensive. Parish churches were at the very heart of community in medieval England, intimately connected with the great events of life, birth, coming of age and marriage. They also gave comfort in sickness and death. In this lively and insightful history, Nicholas Orme shows us how these churches came into existence and how they were used. He portrays the reality of people's behaviour at church from pious prayer to scandalous rule breaking and shows that parishioners as well as clergy determined how worship was staged. I wanted this last year and I just, I did not bite the bullet and get it, but I'm getting it now. Could you survive Midsummer? This is a choose your own adventure, but you are solving a murder from Midsummer Murders. I'm so excited. Let's read the blurb. You are Midsummer CID's newest, oh, if you don't know, like I'm obsessed with Midsummer Murders. <laughs> obsessed. <laughs> All right. You are Midsummer CID's newest recruit investigating a most bizarre death. Can you make the right decisions and solve the case or will you end up a victim? of a Midsummer Murderer. On the eve of the Midsummer Villages in Bloom competition in England's most notorious county, a... I'm trying to talk here. A body has been found lying beneath a pile of homemade dams and jam jars. As the overseer of the Little Norton entry for the competition, 
Peter James Maddock was well known in the village, but we soon learn that he had a dark past. What could be the reason for his extraordinary death? That's where you, that's where I come in. In this first ever Midsummer interactive novel, step into the shoes of Midsummer CID's new detective and decide which way the story goes. Staying vigilant in a county with such a reputation is no easy feat, but it could just be but it could just be what you need to crack this curious case. <laughs> it's silly and fun and oh, I'm so excited. I'm so, so that was Simon Brew, by the way. And last, now, this is what I usually get for Christmas from me to me is um, a cookbook because cookbooks are expensive. And they're such beautiful pornography. I love them. This one also just came out. This is Kate Reed Loon. I think it's Loon. It's called Croissants All Day All Night. And it is a cookbook from the founder of the Loon Croissantry in Melbourne, which apparently is famous. I have heard of it, uh, but I haven't been there. Um, patisserie in Melbourne. Um, Loon's croissants have regularly been touted as the best in the world since it opened its doors in 2012 and now founder Kate Reed has created a game-changing recipe for the home baker. Starting with a basic pastry recipe that's as simple as it is effective, you can learn to make everything from classic pan au chocolat, strawberry miso danish and ham and gruyere croissant to pumpkin pie croffin, pepperoni pizza escargot and fried chicken croissant. Mm. Following crystal clear step-by-step -step instructions. Loon croissants all day or night reveal how croissant pastry is the perfect vehicle for any sweet or savoury combination, whatever the occasion. Um, this should come as no surprise to any of you. It's bloody heavy. Let's have a look at one page. One page. One. Because it's not Christmas yet. Oh, this one doesn't have pictures. We need pictures. Right. So maybe we might have some croissant vlogs next year. All right, that's my book haul. And if you want to see my thoughts on them once I've read them, you'll need to come back next year. This is what it's more normally like in my house in summer. Let me show you. Blinds shut, dark room, oscillating fan. And here's the tree. So I wrapped some presents for Kipling um, from her grandma and I'm put them over under the tree. They're mine that I wrapped before. This is my festive corner that's happening. Uh, normally I have the tree, we don't normally have this tree, this fiber optic tree is like um, 17 years old and I couldn't be bothered getting out the big one and doing it this year. Normally I put the trees on a Wi-Fi switch so you can just yell out, you know, hey Google, she didn't hear me, um, turn on or turn off Christmas. So that's my view of Christmas but um, that is the stuff that was on that table and now needs a new home for the summer. So thanks for hanging out with me today. I've had such a lovely day. It's been really nice. It just, I think it's the warmth and hopefully it stays warm. If we can have some hot days all in a row, I just, it's going to be amazing. I can do anything when the sun is out. Thank you for hanging out with me as well. It's been fun as usual. And I hope that you are also planning on getting awesome books for Christmas too, if you celebrate Christmas. I'm assuming you celebrate books, but you know, not everyone does Christmas. And I will see you next time. Bye.